Hey guys, welcome to Star Wars Experience. Now by this time, we all know about the different Star Wars series Disney is bringing to their streaming service. I think this is a great idea to really allow them to expand the universe even more. The series that I'm looking forward to the most, however, is the Kenobi series. I'm really excited to see what they have in store for him because not a lot is known for what happens after Revenge of the Sith and before A New Hope. To help get everybody in the mood, I'm going to talk about five interesting facts about Obi-Wan Kenobi that you might not know. Now, if you're a diehard fan like I am, you probably know all these, but I thought it would be a good refresher and hopefully get people excited for the new series coming to Disney+. Plus. Obi-Wan was almost not selected to be a Padawan. As a youngling, Kenobi was almost left behind and being taken on as a Padawan. When he was younger, he was known for his erratic behavior. He was actually very similar to Anakin in this way. This left the Jedi to be skeptical about taking him on as a Padawan. It wasn't until a sparring session at the Jedi Temple where Qui-Gon Jinn took notice of him. Master Jinn still found him to be too troublesome, and it really wasn't until Qui-Gon found himself trapped on Bandamere where he truly saw Kenobi's potential. Since they were forced to work together to survive, they found they worked really well as a team. Obi-Wan actually left the Jedi Order. Now, you wouldn't really expect someone as renowned and well-decorated as Obi-Wan to actually leave the Jedi Order. However, he actually did. Obi-Wan once left the Order to pursue a personal mission. Kenobi was caught in a planet-wide civil war between Maleta and Don. This led Kenobi to make the hard decision to stay and help end the conflict. A conflict so big and that has been going on for so long, the original dispute had been forgotten. After a while, though, Obi-Wan realized he didn't truly belong in such a conflict and eventually making the decision to return to the Order. Qui-Gon was willing to take his exiled Padawan back, however, this led to a feeling of distrust between the Master and the Apprentice. His lightsaber combat has changed throughout the films. Obi-Wan is known for being one of the best duelists in the galaxy. He has taken on and defeated many great adversaries such as Darth Maul, General Grievous, and even his old Padawan and friend, Anakin Skywalker. To be fair, if Anakin wasn't so arrogant, he probably would have won. Nonetheless, Obi-Wan is still an amazing warrior. Kenobi is mostly known for Form 3 Sorisu. However, that's not the only form he implemented on film. As a Padawan, Obi-Wan favored the fourth form, Ataru. This is because of his master, Qui-Gon, along with Master Yoda. This acrobatic lightsaber form suited well with the young Kenobi, as we've seen from his duel with Darth Maul. Eventually, Obi-Wan would prefer the defensive tactics of Form 3, which helped aid his victory against General Grievous. Kenobi fell in love during his younger years. As a Padawan, Kenobi became very fond of another Padawan named Siri Tachi. The two became very connected through working together with their masters, Qui-Gon Jinn and Adi Gallia. After forming an incredible bond, the two decided to put the order first rather than their feelings for one another, eventually causing their friendship to completely separate. I think this is very cool to know, because we see in the films Obi-Wan as the poster boy for the Jedi Order being perfect and never putting his feelings ahead of him. Even after his relationship he built with Duchess Satine, which ended up being somewhat of a tragic story, he was eventually able to bounce back and be mindful of his emotions. I think knowing this really adds to his character arc, showing even Kenobi has gone through pain and growth. There were artifacts named in his honor. Known for being one of the greatest Jedi to ever live, the New Republic took note of that. For example, the Obi-Wan was the first of the new class of Star Destroyer to be commissioned by the New Republic. Another example was the Kenobi Offensive which is a name given to the maneuver of a starship crediting Obi-Wan, which was a series of sniping attacks. This attack was used to draw the enemies out of their formation. After the destruction of the first Death Star, the Kenobi Medallion was an award given to members of the Alliance that showed great bravery. Two recipients of this award were Pilot Jack Porkins for his bravery during the Battle of Yavin and Sergeant Rhea during the Battle of Hoth. I hope you found this information interesting, and I hope it gets you excited for the new upcoming Kenobi series. I'm honestly really excited to see what they do and how they're going to implement Darth Vader into the series. I would like to hear some of your theories 
about what you think they're going to introduce into the show. Please comment them below if you don't mind. And if you wouldn't mind, please give this video a thumbs up and possibly even subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.